Hello, Steve from Steve's Makerspace, and today I made something in P5JS. It is an art maker. It makes art in the style of P8 Mondrian, and there are plenty of buttons here you can play with, and sliders, so we can have the rectangles overlap if we want. And I'm clicking in the canvas area to get a new piece. Uh, I can switch this from Mondrian colors which are these primary colors, over to random colors. And now we're getting a nice uh, random selection of colors. We can put it back to no overlap. We can have just lines if we want. We can uh, put the overlap again. You get this. We can switch it back to rectangles. Then we can adjust the number of rectangles. Let's make a bunch of rectangles. We can change the size of the rectangles, make them small. We can change the interval. The interval is like how spaced apart are the rectangles from each other. Uh, it's easier to show than to explain. So I'll just increase the interval a bunch and I think you'll get it. There's a large interval. And then if I switch that to a small interval, the difference between them, you see like these two right here, these two together have a small interval between where one starts and the other begins. Lots of options to play with. If you get something you like, uh, let's decrease the number of rectangles. Let's do no overlap. So if you find something you like, you can hit S and it'll save it as a JPEG. And we can open that up. And there you go, you got yourself a JPEG, you can Print that and put it on your wall if you want. I will have a link to this viewer and also to the code in the description to this video so you can play with it. Now is this art? Sort of. It's you plus this can make art because you are a curator and you are playing with these variables but uh, you get to decide is this a really nice piece? I think this one in particular is pretty nice. Let me save that one. This is a category of art called generative art. So you can go through here and you're going to see a lot of garbage that, you know, is clearly not art. But then you're going to come across one and you say, that looks good. And so you pick that out and now it's art. I also wanted to mention that uh, Deep Dream Generator, which I showed off in the last couple of videos, I submitted one of my pieces to here and added a style uh, and then it produced this which is pretty interesting so I'm using the generative art from one program and the machine learning of another program to create this uh, and here is another example the same generative art from my p5js sketch and I used this as a style composite and it produced this which is a little weird but I think it's interesting. And if you haven't seen my Deep Dream Generator video, you can go check that out. I'll leave a link to that in the video description. Give a quick shout out to the coding train. This is where I learned to code with P5JS. If you want to learn to code, I strongly suggest checking out his channel. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I'm going to talk a little bit about Mondrian very briefly, and then I'm going to talk about the code. Uh, but I know I'll lose a few of you if I do that. So if you've liked this video so far, if you've liked what I've done, give me a like, consider subscribing to the channel, ring the bell for notifications. Uh, comments are always welcome. And that's it. So next, I want to talk very briefly about Mondrian. This is P8 Mondrian from the Netherlands, born 1872, died 1944. He's regarded as one of the greatest artists of the 20th century known for pioneering 20th century abstract art. Let me show you some of his art pieces. I'll turn off my webcam. He founded the Distigital Movement, also known as the Style or Neoplasticism, and he's a founder of Minimalism. So let me go through some of the rest of these a little more quickly. You can see. And in 1966, Yves Saint Laurent made these dresses in his style. Now let me move my webcam over and we'll talk about the code. 
I'm not going to go over everything in the code, just some highlights. So we've got some global variables, then we've got the setup where I'm making the buttons and the sliders. I'm also positioning things so it looks nice. This is the X, Y position of this window. At the end of the setup, I'm creating a new canvas. And the new canvas is a random width, minimum of 40% of the window's width to 100% of the window's width, and the same with the height. I've got a different stroke color depending on whether we're doing Mondrian's colors or not. Uh, so if we have Mondrian, we're doing gray stroke. And then if it's not Mondrian, either the just lines, this is black, and the random colors is black. Next, I'm changing the color mode to HSB. The normal color mode in P5JS is RGB, red, green, blue, but HSB is hue, saturation, brightness, and this is a color wheel. So you've got 360 degrees, all the colors of the rainbow going around. This is much easier for picking random colors, whereas if I used RGB, the colors would clash because they'd just be all over the place. If I'm not using Mondrian's colors, then I'm going to pick a random number of colors uh, between three and seven colors. And then my saturation is gonna be between 60% and 100%, and brightness is between 50% and 100%. Next in here is just all the button functions. And the colors I'm picking out are not completely random. We're picking one random color in the color wheel, and then the rest of the colors are divided evenly through the color wheel. So if we have three colors and it's 360 degrees, you might have color one is zero, color two is 120, color three is 240. And what that's gonna do is make the colors look a little bit better together because if they were too close together, uh, it might clash. Now here, if we're not using the random colors, if we're using Mondrian's colors, then it's selecting from an array because I had to pick out these specific colors and I'll show you up here there's an array of Mondrian's colors this is red this is black blue yellow and white first color is hue second color is saturation third color is brightness so I pick a number between 0 and 5 then I'm going to fill with mond colors let's say it picks red maybe that's number three I don't know so it'll take the third position of the array uh, the first number is the hue, and then the number after that, plus one, is the saturation, and the number after that, plus two, is the brightness. And then I call the draw rectangle function. And then here I'm drawing the border around the canvas. Here's the draw rectangle function. The starting position of the rectangle is based on the width and height of the canvas and also the intervals that were chosen. And then the size of the rectangle is determined by the slider and also the intervals. For the overlap, the code was not too difficult, but when I started doing overlap, the code got a lot more complicated because I had to check before I draw a rectangle, is there space for that rectangle? So I'm getting ready to do that here. It's kind of complicated, so I don't think I'm going to go through all of it. But basically, I'm saying, okay, I want to draw a rectangle in this position right here. So I'm starting at the top left over here, and I'm checking, uh, going from left to right. Not quite checking every square, but checking some intervals until I get to the end of where I want to draw the rectangle. And then I go back over to the left and down one, and I check that again. And if I get to the end and I haven't encountered any other colors, then I know I'm free to draw the rectangle there. I'm using a get function to get the color at the position where I happen to be checking at the moment. Now, even though I've switched to HSB mode, the get function returns an RGB value. So I'm checking to see if what it returned was 255, 255, 255, which is the value of the background, a white background. I'm also checking a pixel on either side of that one pixel that I'm checking because I found that it sometimes made mistakes because if you notice this white is actually not exactly the same color as this white. If this rectangle was the same shade of white as the background color, then the checking formula would not work properly because it would say, oh, there's plenty of space in here for me to draw a rectangle. 
So this rectangle is a slightly different color, but when you have only a slightly different color, that means the computer is drawing an actual white pixel, and then next to it, it's drawing a slightly different shade of pixel so that it appears to be what this color is. So anyway, I had to check the pixels around that one pixel and just make sure that all of them returned white. And sometimes it still does overlap with the Mondrian, but I think most of the time it's successful. So if it successfully gets to the end, then this draw variable is going to be true. And if it doesn't get to the end, then this draw variable will return false. So finally, if draw is true, then let's go ahead and draw the rectangle. And then if just lines is true, because you've got this on, then there's going to be a no fill. I'm also keeping track of how many rectangles it draws so that if it hasn't drawn enough, it continues trying to draw more rectangles. And I'm keeping track of a limit, basically a stack limit. And I think I've got the stack limit to 500. If it continues to try to draw rectangles and it just can't because there's no room, then the browser might freeze and it won't complete the drawing. So if it tries for 500 times to draw a rectangle and it can't, then it just stops. Now we're at the end of the code. If a click is pressed here, you are going to do a new canvas. And then down here, if you type the letter S, then it's going to make a JPEG. And that's it. 218 lines. So you're welcome to do something with this code if you like. Of course, there's a link to that as well. Uh, if you do do something with it and share it around, please give me some credit. Now, I am not an experienced coder, so if you are and you see something that could be done better, please let me know. Now it's time to wrap up. If you like this video, give it a like, consider subscribing to the channel, ring the bell for notifications. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now. Steve's Makerspace.